Good morning. Have you ever thought where demonic forces come from? We sort of got into this yesterday. Where do those powers exist? Well, Richard, why are you saying all this? Because I think we're on such a vital subject that is totally unknown to so many people. It certainly was to me when I first got into it. And the Lord was gracious. He threw me in at the deep end and gave me experiences I'd never like to go through again. I finished up yesterday morning by saying maybe your church can't help you either. I am horrified and really grieved to see how so often the churches stand by unable to help people who have problems with demonic powers. Let's go back to where we were yesterday morning. I read to you from Isaiah 14 verse 11, and I read from the King James Version. Let me read to you again. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground? Now, when we looked at creation, we found that everything that God did was good. Everything. Because God is good. In other words, everything God made was perfect. So somebody says, well then, Richard, where did evil come from? The evil came from the perfect that fell and became imperfect, starting with Lucifer and all his honchos. When Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, fell from heaven. He became evil, and since then he has done everything to destroy mankind, and especially in this day, to destroy Christians. His one thing is to destroy your walk in Jesus Christ. He'll do it by destroying your church. He'll do it by destroying your home. He'll do it by destroying your morality. He could care less. And what we have seen in this whole ministry of what we term prayer counseling is the way he'll seek to destroy little children. And he does not care. All he's seeking to do is to destroy. Now remember something else the Bible says. Satan was a liar from the beginning. Everything Satan ever says to you are lies. When these people come up in court and say, I heard God tell me to kill this individual, they heard a voice, and the voice was satanic. And the voice was from the whole realm of Satan. God would never tell anyone to kill anybody else. But in this situation, we find that demonic forces are saying these things, and people are hearing them, and they are hearing voices. That's why I did a whole series on listening to God, so that we know God's voice as against demonic voices. But be sure of this, there are many, many demonic voices today, and they're not all audible voices, they simply deal in thought patterns. You watch people's faces, especially when they drive. Don't look around now if you're driving on the road, keep your eye on the road. But you take a glance at people's faces. They are absolutely full of confusion. And I believe many of those people are hearing voices in the forms of thought patterns that are absolutely demonic. Let me remind you of what I also said yesterday morning so that we don't get confused. If you are a Christian believer, no demonic spirit can invade your spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells there. But they can be involved in your body and they can be involved in your soul, by which I mean your mind and emotions. And friend, they are because they certainly were in me, and they have been in many other people that we've prayed with. And if you think you're above that, you probably have the deepest problem of anyone listening to me. Oh, you say, Richard, when I was saved, it was all put right. Hallelujah, I think that's great. But it wasn't in my life. I have a sneaky feeling it might not have been in yours. Now, why did I want to come back on this subject? Well, I felt I left you rather hanging in the air yesterday. And I think there's something that should be cleared up. Let's go back to what I said. I said there were three ways that demonic forces come into our lives. First of all, by heredity, and unfortunately by ethnic background. That's why I said to you about those of us who come from Britain and Germany, a lot of us suffer from witchcraft. If you have American Indian blood, there are a lot of problems that come in there 
because of the sort of situation in which those people lived. And I referred you, and I do again, to Exodus chapter 20, where the Lord our God gives us the Ten Commandments. It might be good for us just to share that, because people don't seem to see this. You know, we can read those Ten Commandments and miss an awful lot that God says. And God says some very powerful things. Listen. In verse 4, you shall not make for yourself an idol in any form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Now listen to this. Punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Well, what does that mean? Simply this. So many of our forefathers got into things such as witchcraft, tremendous occult activity in Europe, and those problems have come down to the third and fourth generation of those who hate him. When you say, Richard, my grandfather didn't hate me. My great-grandmother didn't hate me. No, but she turned from the Lord your God and turned to other forces. Instead of worshipping God in a pure sense, she got into witchcraft. Well, you say, just a minute, Richard, how on earth can you know this? We cannot know it in and of ourselves. First of all, we didn't know your great-grandmother. But I tell you who did. His name is the Holy Spirit. And he can reveal anything he wants to. Now, God never gossips. But in a counseling situation, God will share. And if a person has that discernment of spirits, God will show them what is active within the individual so that they can be cleaned up. And we have seen such beautiful release. We have seen prisoners set free. People who've been depressed all their lives suddenly set free. We've found something else. Some people want the help and don't want to take it seriously. That is an utter waste of time. The only people who are truly helped are those who want all that Jesus has for them. If they're serious about that, then they can get the help they need and the help they're seeking. But that's very important to understand. Well, you say, surely people don't play in these sort of areas. People play in every area of life. And it is absolutely vital when we're dealing with the demonic that that person truly wants to be set free. They truly want to become God's person. And then we see God doing beautiful things. Now, what about the church? Well, unfortunately, the church has disregarded this area. Many of the church are afraid of it, and I don't blame them. It's an unpleasant area to be dealing in, and it's sacrificial. I want you to know, if you deal with Satan's kingdom, Satan does everything to attack you. He attacks us. He attacks our ministry. He'll attack our homes. He'll attack anything, but God gives us protection, and we need to know that. Sometimes we come under heavy satanic attack, but it's worth it to see prisoners set free. Now remember what we read about God, because I don't want to finish on that note of Satan. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. We have been made in the image of God. And because we've been made in the image of God, we can take on the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Do remember, there are millions of demonic forces. There is one Holy Spirit. There are lots of angels. But there's one Holy Spirit. And he dwells in every one of us who belongs to Jesus Christ. We have the Holy Spirit. And if we let him free within our personality, within our character, he begins to make us like Jesus. He is form us, forming us into the likeness of Christ. And therefore, the things that we shared about God can be found in the Christian because he's been set free from sin. We can experience goodness and mercy and righteousness. We can experience the power of God. We can have holiness, truth, justice, and long-suffering. Of course, there are some things that are just God that we can never experience. We cannot experience his self-existence. We cannot experience his immensity. We're still finite. Therefore, we can't experience his infinity, his omnipresence, his omniscience. Those are things, his 
omnipotence. These are things that we can't experience as human beings. But when you read the fruits of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, those things can become ours in Jesus Christ because we're being made into the likeness of our Lord and Savior. And that's exciting. And if we let Jesus go free by his Holy Spirit, he can form us into the people that he wants us to become. I believe that when Jesus died on that cross, he had an image of what you could be and of what I could be. And all he wants to do is to be free to make us into that person. Is that happening? Remember this. God has made you eternal. He's made you in his image. He wants you to experience these things. He wants you to be open to these things. Friend, open up your soul, your spirit, to all that the Lord your God has for you. And you will see the most beautiful things happening in your life. But be aware of those demonic forces. Well, you say, Richard, how can I protect myself? Very simply. Every day, put on the spiritual armor of God. You'll find it in Ephesians 6 and read from verse 12. Go out properly dressed. Picture one of those Roman soldiers and you put on that spiritual armor. Then call on the Lord and say, Lord, just keep me covered with your blood as I go into this situation today. Even call on his angels for protection. And you will find a reality there that is absolutely fantastic. Our God is all-powerful. 